What's good, family? It's your man, Daryl II. I'm getting ready for bed, but I wanted to drop this quick word. Before I do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this timely word, what you just allowed me to see as I was reading your word. And what you, what you spoke to me. You speak to me in different ways. And so I know in this fashion, I believe you're speaking through your word. So I give you glory and honor in advance. And I say thank you. Have your way in this message and get the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of Father and Thank you through your spirit. Amen. All right, y'all. I just want to say, get to stepping or cut it off. Maybe that's what I'll call this message. Um, there are some conversations you don't need to entertain. There are some company you don't need to keep. There are some people you need to part ways from. And there are some conversations where you just need to interfere and say, no, 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 I'm not hearing that. Why do I say that? Because the more you listen to the wrong information, the more it influences you, the more it impacts you, the more it affects your faith, the more it begins to contaminate your spirit. And before long, you walk around carrying unnecessary toxic mess and you begin to respond to what you hear. You can listen to the wrong words, let your guard down because you're listening. And before you realize it, you make a decision that you otherwise would not make. The Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. The Bible also says, above all else, guard your heart, for it determines the courses in life you will take. So I'm going to read from Genesis 3 so you can see my point. Okay, this is the story of Adam and Eve. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. Excuse me. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit of any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat from the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it, eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. God didn't say all that. He said, just don't eat from it. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees, then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate. The man, uh, then the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man, he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow will you, have, will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Now that's pretty heavy, but that explains the state of the world. It started from them. But it also started when Adam and Eve listened to the serpent. So you notice Eve listened to the serpent, but Adam was sitting there next to her, allowing it to occur. And there are instances in our life where we have to decide, am I going to heed what God said or am I going to entertain what's in front of me? You have the power to say, I ain't listening to that. You have the power to walk away. You have the power to run interference when you see somebody being influenced by the wrong person, somebody you care about. Adam should have taken that stance, but he didn't. He was the leader. He should have interfered and said, no, we're not listening to this and told the serpent to leave, but he didn't. Now, the difference between Adam and Jesus, see if I can find it by looking. 
Jesus had a similar experience with the serpent. Um, well, we'll say Satan. It was a serpent, but he wasn't in that form. But it's in the gospel. Let's see if it's in Matthew. It's definitely, might be in Luke. Might be in Luke. Let me find it. Yeah, here we go. Chapter 4 of Matthew. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, Satan was trying to use scripture. This is a different translation, but I'll, I'll keep going. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump on, jump, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot on the stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. One translation says it is written. Jesus was fighting with the word. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. You see, he had a battle, but he told the devil, get up out of here. And he used the authority he had. And the devil listened. We have the authority of Jesus. And when the Bible says when we submit ourselves before the Lord, we can resist the devil and he will flee. So don't be like Adam and Eve and just sit there and listen. No, be like Jesus and speak God's word. Adam knew not to eat the, eat the fruit, but he didn't ex exercise the authority he was given. As a result, he and his wife were bamboozled. Don't let the devil trick you. He can work through people. I'm going to go because it's getting tired. I'm getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting tired. It's getting late. But if anybody's watching and you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, the only way to have one is through his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus died. That he came back from the dead and you make him Lord of your life. Um, if you confess this and believe this, you will be saved. As a Christian, you'll have attacks, persecutions, but it's a blessed life as well. Um, so if you want to know Jesus, it's important because knowing him, you'll go to heaven, not hell, and you'll have purpose in your life. If you want to know him, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you did that, your name is written in the book of life, and angels are celebrating in heaven on your behalf. I recommend you get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. Oh, and get baptized in water, because you got to be born again of water and spirit. Have a blessed day. My name is Daryl Alder II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Peace.